Well, hope you're having a good day. I uh, just want to take a few moments and uh, look at uh, look into the book of Psalms uh, and uh, just pull a couple of truths out there for us for the day. And it's a, it's a rainy, uh, wet day here in northern Michigan. It's raining pretty good. It's supposed to rain all day uh, and then even into tomorrow as well. We had a beautiful day, though, yesterday, uh, some 60-some degrees. Uh, and I was outside for quite a while there, so you can see a little, little bit of color there in the face. Uh, a little bit red, and uh, uh, I'm a little offended though. My wife, she uh, she calls me Lobster Man now, uh, and uh, because of the redness of my face. So I don't know. Uh, it's kind of harsh, I think. Uh, but uh, uh, but I guess there's nothing I can do about it. Uh, that's just the way. This uh, that's just the way it is. And so, uh, pray for me and my bitterness uh, uh, towards my wife on that one. Uh, we're in Psalm 7 today, uh, and I wanted to look at a couple of verses. And I, I've thoroughly enjoyed our, our study through through the Psalms. So there's so much truth, uh, and uh, uh, there's so much. Uh, I mean, we've looked a lot at uh, David here, and, and uh, he's just a, just a regular guy, just a normal guy, uh, living his life, trying to live for the Lord. Uh, and uh, there's just so much packed into these into these Psalms, uh, and it's just so encouraging. Uh, so uplifting, and uh, I look forward to it every day. So let's look here at Psalm 7. We're going to look just a couple of verses today. Uh, so let's look down at verse number 1. The Bible tells us, O Lord my God, in thee do I put my trust. Save me from all them that persecute me and deliver me. Uh, and so, and then let's look at verse number 2. Lest he tear my soul like a lion, rending it in pieces while there is none to deliver. So we see here in, in a lot of these psalms that David is kind of uh, reassuring himself oftentimes and, uh, and uh, just bringing back to mind many of the things that he's learned in the past. Uh, and, and that's a good thing to do, uh, uh, to, to reflect back from time to time to see how God has blessed, how God has worked, uh, to see what you have learned through trial uh, and tribulation. But as we look here at Psalm 7, we see some of the same truths that we've looked at. Uh, in, in recent uh, recent days. Uh, but look here at, at, the, at the beginning here, verse 1 says, O Lord my God. We see once again, David declares who his God is. Uh, and and he's, he's unashamed uh, of who his God is. He says, O Lord, and is my God. Uh, not just a God, not just the God, but, but it's personal. Uh, and, and it speaks to the personal relationship that God wants to have with David uh, and the same with us today. Uh, we, we say it often, uh, we aren't, uh, uh, Christianity isn't a religion, it's a relationship, and it's a relationship uh, uh, it, it, with Jesus Christ uh, through the means of salvation by grace through faith. And so David here, he says, man, oh Lord, my God, it's a personal relationship that he has. We too must have that personal relationship. And after salvation, uh, much like every relationship, it takes work, it takes time. Uh, there's, there's difficulties in, in building relationships. Uh, and, and all of that is true with our relationship with the Lord. It takes time. Uh, and, and I reference this passage often, but, but in Peter, it tells us to put grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so we're to continually be growing in our relationship with uh, Jesus Christ. And, and that's why it's so important that we spend time in the Word, spend time in prayer, spend time in, in, in the Lord's house, and spend time with God's people. Because we're always growing in that relationship with uh, our God. I love the fact that David says, He's my God, uh, and uh, and Jesus, man, he's my Jesus. He's my Savior. Uh, God is my God. Uh, and so we see David's declaration of who his God is, but also as we continue through verse number one, we're reminded of another fact, fact where it says, O Lord my God, in thee do I put my trust. In thee do I put my trust. Uh, you know what? It's good uh, to go back and to look back at, over our life and uh, and to say, man, I, I've placed my trust in Jesus Christ at salvation. Uh, you know, from time to time, uh, we have opportunity to give testimonies uh, in church. Typically on Wednesdays, uh, they'll have prayer requests and uh, praises. And, and when I'm, uh, when I'm uh, in for the services, uh, during those parts of the service, I like to, you know, is, is there any testimony or praises uh, that we have? And, and I love that. Uh, and uh, it, it never fails. Uh, people uh, often, they'll say, man, you know what? I, I just, I praise the Lord. I thank the Lord for my salvation. 
Uh, and uh, and really, what they're saying is that they thank the Lord for the for the trust uh, in God by by faith. They've trusted uh, that Jesus would save them from their sin, and so uh, it's it's good to do that. But you know what? Each and every day, uh, there is a practice of trust in God for the Christian, because we're not trusting ourselves for salvation. We're not trusting ourselves. Uh, to get us through the day. We know that every gift or every day is a gift from God. Every breath is a gift from God. Uh, and, and we trust uh, in the Lord for the next breath, the next heartbeat, the next day. Uh, and David just says, O oh Lord my God, in thee do I put my trust. Uh, do, are we trusting God each and every day? And then I want you to notice as we continue down through, uh, through verse number one here, it says, Save me from all them that persecute me uh, and deliver me. Uh, what, what I kind of notice here, and, and there's a lot really in that, uh, that clause there, save me from all them that persecute me and deliver me. Uh, but at the heart of it, what I see here is that David has a great confidence uh, in his God. He realizes that, you know what, it's only God that can save him uh, from the persecution. It's only God that can uh, deliver him from uh, uh, his enemies. And uh, and David has great confidence uh, in his God. And you know what, today in 2020... We, we must place our confidence in God. It is only God that can save us, yes, it's salvation, but can save us from the, uh, the trials, from the persecution, uh, from the tribulation. Uh, and he's the one that can deliver us uh, from the difficulties that we may experience. You know, Philippians chapter 1, in verse number 6 says, Be, be confident of this very thing that he which uh, begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of redemption. Uh, you know what? God has begun a good work in us, uh, and we're, he's molding us and shaping us into the image of his son. Uh, and we can be confident uh, in this very thing, that he's begun the work in us, and he's going to continue to do the work in us. And that uh, gives us great confidence in living the Christian life. That's why uh, as, a, as a 19-year-old, maybe 20, almost 20-year-old young man, uh, I, could, I, I put my trust in the Lord for the rest of my life. And, and I, uh, God was doing a work in my life in, in surrendering it to full-time Christian ministry. And, and God doesn't call everybody to a full-time Christian ministry, but he does call everybody to a Christian ministry or to be uh, serving the Lord and ministering to people. Uh, but the Lord was calling me into, uh, into the pastor, pastoral ministry, and, and I was fighting it for a while. Uh, and uh, I finally decided, you know what, God, I'm going to trust you uh, for my life, and, and I'm going to put my confidence in you. Hey, you've started this work. You've begun working in my heart. Hey, I'm going to follow through with it, uh, and my confidence is in you, God. Uh, and, and each and every day, it needs to be that way with the, with the believer, is we need to trust the Lord. You know, you know one of the things that, that, that I find, found myself doing uh, and, uh, and I, and I even, even sometime today is, you know, I can sit in church and I can, or I can be reading my Bible uh, and, and I know the Holy Spirit's leading uh, me to do something, leading me to make this decision, uh, to change something in my life. And, and, and I'll sit there and I'll just kind of fight it. And I'll say, God, you, you can't be talking to me about that. You know, I can't do that. Instead, I need to place my confidence in the Lord. Say, you know what, Lord, you're leading me this way. Hey, I'm going to follow. Hey, that's what you want me to do. I'm going to do it. And we can do that because our confidence is in God. Uh, and, and he's not going to lead us astray. He's begun a work in us. And we have great confidence in salvation. Hey, he's going to continue to do a work in us. Let's have, let's give, let's have great confidence in, in him for each and every day. Uh, that's the difficult thing to do. Uh, you know, we, uh, we talk about salvation quite a bit, and, and we see it mentioned in Scripture quite often, and we're, we're confident in, in our eternity, but sometimes we doubt God day to day. Let's have confidence in Him for today. And then uh, as we continue, we see that David is, uh, uh, he says uh, in verse number one, once again, save me, from, uh, uh, save me from all them that persecute me. So he's suffering he says, and deliver me, deliver him from, him from his enemies. And then look at verse number two. We see uh, what David perceives is going to happen to him. He says, lest he tear my soul like a lion. Um, 
rending it in pieces. Uh, and, and so we see the very real danger uh, that David is in and, and the danger is real in his life and he's, uh, he's experiencing it and he feels it and, uh, and, and he feels it so very much that his life is in uh, danger. And so he's calling upon the Lord uh, to rescue him, to save him and deliver him from this very present and very real danger that he is experiencing right now. And as a Christian, uh, the danger uh, for us is very real today. Uh, and First Peter chapter 5 and verse number 8 tells us, be sober, be vigilant. Hey, be serious-minded. Pay attention because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion. Walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Why should we call on the Lord? Why should we put all of our trust all of our confidence uh, in the Lord is because the danger is real. Satan is out there and he would love nothing more than to ruin my life and to ruin your life. Therefore, therefore we must be uh, sober. We must be vigilant. We must be paying attention uh, to what is going on around us and put our confidence in the Lord, our trust in the Lord, because we have a very real danger and Satan is out there and wants to ruin our lives lives. And then we see uh, down in verse number two at the very end where it says, while there is, is none to deliver. So lest he tear my soul like a lion, rending it into pieces while there's none to deliver. Uh, David here, he, is a, he has really exhausted uh, all of his resources. He's exhausted uh, all of uh, those things that would protect him. And he's drawn to the Lord here. And so we see here that this failure uh, uh, of seeking others for protection, uh, all the other means that, that he has used has failed to protect him from his enemies, has failed to protect him from those who want to want to persecute him. Uh, and, and so he's dr driven to the Lord. And, 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 and really it's as, as a last resort kind of, he says, you know what, Lord, I've tried it. Uh, I need you. Uh, I, I've, I've sought uh, all these means and ways of protection, but God, I need you. My trust is in you. I am confident that you can take care of me. Hey, you've started this work in me uh, and, you, and you'll continue to use me. Uh, and so we see this failure of the other protections here. There's none to deliver. Really, there's none to deliver except you, Lord, he is saying. And, and why, why could David say that? You know what, because our friend, friends are, are, are going to come and go. Friendships will begin uh, and end. Uh, our, our, our circumstances are always changing. Uh, and our finances are always changing. You look at our world today, it's always changing. Uh, a little virus has changed the world as we know it. Uh, and, uh, and, but, you know, Jesus, he doesn't change. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse number eight says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Nothing has caught Jesus off guard. There is protection, there's safety and security in Jesus Christ alone. And David says, comes to the Lord, he says, O Lord, my God, in thee do I trust. And then he says, save me, deliver me. Hey, I, I, I've tried, to, I've done my best to protect myself uh, and to take care of myself. But Lord, I need you during this very, these very dangerous times of my life. And that's, that's kind of the, the prayer and the cry that we need to have, a prayer of deliverance. As we find our, our nation, our state, our, our county, uh, you know, we're, people living in fear because of this virus. And, uh, and uh, you know, I don't know and, and don't want to speculate, but... Uh, many people out there believe that uh, the media is feeding us a lie and they've stirred up this frenzy. Uh, and, uh, but you know what? Regardless of, of where you lie in your belief on this whole thing, there is a God that's in control. And Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He, Him, we can trust. He uh, will take care of us. And we can be confident of that fact because He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Well, I want to thank you so much for being a part of our time together today. Let's bow for a word of prayer uh, and then be able to get, get on uh, with the rest of your day. Enjoy the rain. 
uh, and uh, just I love the sound of the rain uh, and, and the, the I, I love the smell of the air after the rain, even during the rain. Uh, and so these, I kind of like these kind of days today. Uh, but let's pray, uh, and then I'll let you get back to your day today. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all that you've done for us, God. I'm thankful that we can come to you in confidence, knowing that, that you've started a work in us, and you'll continue to do that work. I'm so thankful uh, uh, for the fact that, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. God, may we live in confidence May our, our trust and, and our faith in you never waver because we have that personal relationship with you. God, I pray that you bless our day today. Keep us safe in all that we do. Once again, we pray for wisdom for our leadership. Uh, we pray for uh, Sarah Barnett, who is, uh, starts our chemo today. I pray that you just strengthen her body. Once again, continue to be with the family. Pray also that, that you would continue to be with Daniel and Megan. Uh, neater uh, as they, they continue to adjust uh, to life without Micah. And uh, God, we know that, that you've got a great plan and we know that you're in control. God, I pray that during these trying times that we find ourselves in, that God, we would draw close to you. God, we love you and we're thankful for the opportunity we have to look into your word, the opportunity that we have to come to your throne uh, through this avenue of prayer. Bless us now. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, Lord bless you. Uh, remain in prayer for these that we've mentioned uh, as well as others. And then I want to encourage you to reach out to somebody today. Be an encouragement and a blessing to them. Like and share the video. And I look forward to seeing you again uh, tomorrow. Have a blessed day.